Master God, we thank you, we praise you for your love and kindness, your grace and mercy. Thank you, God, for the privilege and the honor that you have afforded us to be your people. As we pause in your holy presence, God, we pray that your divine will and purpose will be accomplished here tonight in our lives and, through God, through our lives, that we will live in such a way that we will please you and be a blessing in your kingdom. So we give your name praise, we give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 All right. Tonight we're going to take a look at Jesus' entry into um, Jerusalem, riding on the donkey, the triumphal entry. We'll take a look back at, at the truth that, that, it, that it points to, that help us understand what that truth is, and, and understanding the truth, how we love him and embrace it. Because so many times we will hear, see, understand the truth of God, but because it um, creates a challenge for our lives, we choose something other than to uh, follow after God and his truth because uh, we think it's, you know, it puts us in a bad position or it's too difficult or quite frankly, it's not fun. It's not something we want to do, but it's always best for us. <coughs> so let's take a, a look. It's, it's Mark chapter 11. We begin at verse 1. Mark chapter 11, we're going to begin at verse 1. It says, Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at, at, at that and see um, what messages, what truths it, it, it holds for us, especially this time of year. The first thing that we comes to us in this text is that Jesus is entering into Jerusalem as the Messiah King, as the promised deliverer. He is the one who all the prophets talked about. Uh, in fact, the Jews were expecting a Messiah. They just didn't expect him to show up looking like Jesus and acting like Jesus, but they expected a Messiah. He's the, he, he, he comes uh, presenting himself as the one that they have been waiting for. So it really was no question did they recognize what he was saying or not because they did. They, they, he came and he was started um, acting a certain way. He rode in on the donkey. He, he, he conducted himself a, a certain way. He came in as Messiah King. But the problem they faced or they encountered is a problem that we encounter a lot of times. That when Jesus show up, he doesn't follow the script. He doesn't show up and behave himself like, like we want him to. Yeah. He don't come in saying what we want him to say, doing what he want, we want him to do. He doesn't deal with the people in our lives like we want him to deal with them. You know, we, we, we got a, a script for Jesus. This is what we want you to do. And many times, our prayer life is a rehearsal of that script. Yeah. Okay, Lord, this is what I need you to do. This is what I want you to do. This is how I want you to do it. Yeah. And we tell him what the script is, but then he shows up. And we know it's him, but he doesn't follow the script. And that's what moved him from Hosanna on, on Sunday to crucify him on Friday, mm -hmm. is that he didn't um, measure up to how they were expecting him to come. They, they were expecting him to do certain things, and he didn't do it. You know, kind of like you expected him to heal, and he didn't. Mm -hmm. you, you expected him to, to take care of your enemies and, and deal with them who hurt you, and he didn't. Not the way that you wanted him to. 
you 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 paid your tithes. You expect him to to show up with enough money for you to handle your business. But he, all of a sudden, you still don't have enough money. He didn't, and so you're wondering, Lord, what are you doing? Why didn't you? Because we can move from Hosanna to crucify him if we have wrong expectations. Mm -hmm. And many times they have wrong they had wrong expectations about Jesus who showed up on, on Palm Sunday, the triumph of entry, he showed up as the Messiah King. Mm -hmm. Now what we can we can look at what he did with the disciples. He he told the disciples, he said to the disciples, you guys go and um, untie a donkey. Go over into the village. You're going to see this donkey. When you see the donkey, nobody's ever seen the donkey before. You, what you need to do is you need to untie it and bring it to, to me. Mm -hmm. Untie it and bring it. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a donkey that no one ever sat on before. It's, it's over in the village. They're going to walk in. They're going to see it. Which means they don't know. They're not the owners of this donkey. So mm -hmm. Jesus basically told him to go take somebody else's donkey and bring it to me. <laughs> go get that donkey and bring it. Now the disciples had to exercise faith in order to obey Christ. And we can see that's a truth that we need to take away. If we're going to love God and serve God, we need to exercise faith that goes beyond what's rational to us. Uh -huh. it, it, you know, We say, well, that don't make sense to me. He wouldn't want, well... Faith doesn't have to make sense. Mm -hmm. You know, faith is based upon obedience to God's word. What God says, go and go do. Because the Lord is saying some stuff that they really got faith about. One, the, the Lord's not in the village. <laughs> he's not there. Mm -hmm. But yet he knows the donkey's going to be there. Mm -hmm. So so he's showing already there's a, a, his divinity, his, his uh omniscience. He knows everything. Because how do you know a donkey is going to be there? <laughs> and obviously he knew more than his disciples because he had to tell his disciples the donkey was going to be there. Okay. If, the donkey, if the disciples knew as much as Jesus, he wouldn't have to tell them that the donkey was going to be there. <laughs> they would have known it. So if we know as much as Jesus, why do we need his word to tell us? Okay. If we need his word to tell us, then it's obvious that we don't know as much as he knows. Mm -hmm. So if he knows more than us, we don't know what he knows, then why do we fight him rather than just go get the donkey? Mm -hmm. <laughs> just go ahead and do it because he, the fact that he knows and we don't, is, is pretty good evidence that he has uh, an ability that we don't have. Okay. He has insight that we lack. He knows stuff and can do stuff that is outside our preview. Uh, we, we don't have the, the, uh, the bandwidth. We don't have the reach to get it done. Jesus, Jesus does. All right, so we're in Mark. We're in Mark chapter 11. Uh, we started from verse 1 through verse 9. Mark 11, verse 1 through verse 9. So, so what we see is the disciples, they had this, um, this demand, this call, this mission laid upon them to go get the donkey. Mm -hmm. And they were told, if anybody says something to you. Right. Now, think about this. If they don't say nothing, <laughs> the disciples are going to do what? <laughs> Just take the donkey and bring it, right? If they were going, if, if the people said something, the disciples was going to do what? Say what he told, and then do what? Bring the donkey. So either way, they're going to get the donkey to Jesus. <laughs> See, so the Lord, what we, what we can take from that, uh, saints of God, is that when God tells you to do something, it's already worked out. All yes. the contingencies yes. are worked out. Yes. See, if, if, if the people show up, there's a plan. If they don't show up, there's a plan. Yes. If, if the bill get paid on time, there's a plan. If the bill don't get paid on time, there's a plan. Yes. If the doctor gives a good report, there's a plan. Yes. If the doctor doesn't give a good report, there's a plan. Yes. If we take God at his word, then the, all the contingencies are covered. <laughs> he says, go. If they, say, if, they, if they say something, if they don't say nothing, just get the donkey and bring it on back. If they say something, tell them what I told you to tell them. So in other words, if you don't have, if you don't have, uh, excuse me, if people challenge you mm -hmm. in your obedience, mm -hmm. what should you do? 
be obedient to the next thing. Right, mm -hmm. right. This, no, come on. See, it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not difficult to understand. We just get in the way and we make it hard to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, go get the donkey. That's thing number one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Untie it and bring it to me. That's, mm -hmm. that's number one. But if you get challenged, mm -hmm. if somebody says you, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. then, then you have to be obedient with charge number two. Okay. Just tell them what I told you to tell them. That's obedience in, in charge number two. And then do what? Do what I told you to do in the first place. Come on. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the key to us being faithful to God. Yes. Is when things come up, we're faithful in the contingency. <laughs> we're faithful to the first thing, even though we're obedient to thing number seven, eight, nine, and ten. Mm -hmm. See, we're still God, we're still committed to living for God, even if the what we're called to obey changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you you following me? Mm -hmm. So I'm supposed to be obedient to God. I'm I'm I'm, I'm supposed to do God's will. I live for God's glory and I live for God's honor. You're supposed to live for God's glory and live for God's honor. If don't nobody mess with you, you sing and praise songs all day. You happy, you shout, you ain't got, there's nothing happening. Ain't nobody getting on your nerves. The doctor reports good. Your bills are being paid. Kids acting right. The dog didn't mess up the house. You're doing good. Right. And you're singing praise songs. You're feeling good. Right. So that's if, that's if nobody says anything. Mm -hmm. But, but, and now you can sing praise songs. You can do his will and feel good about it. Girl, I'm having a wonderful day, right? Mm -hmm. But then stuff starts happening. Okay. You hear a knock in your car. Uh, uh. Contingency plan. What do you do? You start praying. You trust God. You go. Somebody asks you that don't you don't even like. Mm -hmm. Ask you for your help. That's going to cause you to have to interrupt your day or cause you to give up some that little bit of that money that you have. Mm -hmm. And you say, Wait a minute. I don't even like you. Like, what, how do you talk to me like that? <laughs> Now we got to be obedient, helping somebody that we don't even like. Yes. <laughs> you see, but the issue is, I'm still supposed to be glorifying God. Right. How do I glorify God? I bless those no matter what they do. So, so what I do? I bless the person. Not because, not because uh, I, I want to heap hot coals on your head or make you feel guilty for not helping me, but I bless you, you because I'm being obedient to God. Mm -hmm. Somebody do something. God says to forgive. You're having a hard time forgiving them. They ain't asking for no get forgiveness. They don't care if you forgive them or not. They ain't going on living their life. And you say, you ain't, you ain't apologize. They don't care. I don't care. I'm still going to hold it against them. But what have you done? You failed the contingency obedience. Because God calls us to love and to bless and be with him. So if we fail in the contingency, then we can't accomplish the first mission. If the, if the disciples, when they went to get the donkey, had failed in the contingency, mm -hmm. they would have left the donkey. <laughs> they would have went back. Jesus said, we were going to untie the donkey, Jesus. But, but they challenged us, and, and, and the owner came out and said, what y'all doing? And we didn't want to go to jail, Jesus, so we, we didn't take the donkey. <laughs> you see, if you fail in the contingency, you also fail in the primary. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have to see, what's the focus? The focus is obedience to God. And, and, and while you're living out your obedience to him, some contingency stuff might come up. Mm -hmm. Think about Job. All of a sudden we say it happened to Job. All that stuff was contingency. Mm -hmm. Trying to do what? Break the, Job's reputation of being perfect before God. Mm -hmm. You see, if he had failed in the contingencies, yeah. then he would have lost the, the, the title of being one always faithful to God. Because, but so that's that's what that's what we we can take away from here. We let the enemy confuse us and move the bar and make it about relationship. Did you know? It's about it's about boyfriend girlfriend. It's about people, friendship. We make it about money. Mm -hmm. We let the enemy move the bar and make it about stuff that happens in our lives. Mm -hmm. That's not the bar. That's too low of a, of 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 an expectation. That's too old, too low of a standard. It's not about the people and the stuff that go on in your life. The Lord said, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Right. It is about our commitment and obedience to God. 
And the enemy brings all of these things to us, all these contingencies to us, trying to convince us to leave the donkey and go back to Jesus with an excuse. Mm. We don't want to do that. We want to say, no, I'm going to do what we've done here. Why? Because our discipleship highlights his messiahship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we are faithful disciples, it tells the world that Jesus Christ is Lord. Think about before you got saved in the knock that, on, on, that you hear a lot of unsaved folks say about the church. They ain't living no better than I am. So, you know, they get out there, they, you, you say something wrong, them, they cuss you out quicker than anybody else. <laughs> so, a lot of dudes out there say, you know, man, look, it's them church girls, them church girls, they, they, they the wild. When you look up with church girl, you got something. <laughs> I, 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 I know that's true. <laughs> I know that's sad. So all I'm saying to you is, is the fact, the fact that, that what you 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 uh, what we present <coughs> with uh, failing the contingencies mm -hmm. take away from our ability to show that Jesus Christ is Lord of our lives. Yeah, Jesus. When we're faithful to him. In the contingencies, because not because we try to just want to get that thing right, but we want to be faithful to Him. We want to prove our love and our commitment to God. That's how we remain faithful in the contingencies. But look, also look here: the Messiah is not going to send you into a situation that He hasn't prepared you to handle. So if you walk, if you're following, doing your best to follow Jesus, doing everything you can to be faithful to God, and you walk into a situation. Don't think that God ain't prepared you. Mm -hmm. Stop being, being scared. Okay, God, come now. Start looking in your toolkit and say, God, what did you already give me to handle this? Yeah. He's already put in your spirit the, what, what's necessary to deal with whatever comes into your life if you're following him. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not following him, the nail you picked up was on your own. Mm -hmm. Now, you may call him like AAA and come fix it, mm -hmm. but... But you, you got it, not because, not because he's sitting, but if you're following him, whatever happens, he's already equipped you to deal with it. He, he told the disciples, listen, if they come, this is what you say. And look how powerful it is. Just look how powerful it is. Tell them two things. The Lord has need of it. And I'm gonna bring it right back. <laughs> well, first off, you didn't tell who the Lord was or where you were taking it. <laughs> you didn't tell me who the Lord was or what you was gonna do with my donkey. Mm -hmm. You just said the Lord needs it, and we're gonna bring it back. Mm -hmm. Well, where are you taking it and what you gonna do with it? And, and, and somebody asked you for your stuff, and, and you gonna ask that? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, when you come do that? Wait a minute. <laughs> That's right. And, and, and they, they didn't even ask him for a, a, a deposit. <laughs> well, leave a little something. Make sure you bring it back. No. They, and, and we know that they got held up because of the language of the text. The language of the text, and, and you, can, you, can, you can almost hear um, a little hostility in it before they said it. Because the language of the text says, that when they told them what Jesus said, then they let them go. All right. All right. See, if, if, if they wasn't holding them up, <laughs> if, they, if they wasn't standing as a roadblock between the, uh, the disciples and where they had to get back to Jesus, they would not, the text would not have to say they let them go. Mm -hmm. They were being restrained. Right. It wasn't just what why you untied it. You're like, yo, man, what you doing? <laughs> and then they were, yo, they, were, they, they have stood there restraining the disciples. Mm. And the disciples say, the Lord has need of it, and we're gonna bring it back. Is that what you say? Mm. If folk, <laughs> you tried to win this, and folk walk right up on you, roll up on you and say, look good, look here, man, what you doing? You start trying to run your pocket, or go do it. You gonna say, "Wait a minute, Jesus sent me here, okay. okay, and I have a message for you." Mm -hmm. See, we're gonna start saying, "Man, look, I, 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 just let me go. I'll be right back." <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna start, we're gonna try, try to get out the situation. Mm -hmm. 
I ain't saying getting out of the situation is bad. Please don't stay nowhere and get hurt. All right? That's not what I'm saying to you. But what I'm trying to show you the difference here that the focus wasn't getting out the situation. The focus was accomplishing the mission that God had given them. Mm -hmm. See, we're so, we get so fixated on changing our circumstances, our situation, that many times we forget what the initial mission is. Mm -hmm. We forget what God has called us, charged us, to, and equipped us to do mm -hmm. because we're trying to get out from under the pressure of the current situation. Mm -hmm. We don't want this to happen. But that's not the disciples. And when that happened here, the disciples finally did what? They showed who the Messiah was. Mm -hmm. And because and you have to ask yourself, why did they let him go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why did they let him go? You wouldn't have let him go. Mm -hmm. If they run up and take your car, they say, I'm, a, I'm bringing it right back. I got to take get my boss a ride to work. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, well no. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Call Uber. <laughs> you, <would not. laughs> you, you, you ain't going to let them just run off with your stuff. Mm -hmm. but the, so you have to ask yourself, why did they let them go? You see, when we're on with the word of God, the world do crazy stuff. Mm. When we're when we're armed and we and God speaks his word and we live based upon the word, the will, and the privilege of God, the world will do stuff that they don't even don't even make sense. Mm. They will give you stuff and do stuff and, and fight for you and move out the way. When so many times we're so afraid. To stand on God's word in, mm. in front of the world that we give the world what they want. They don't even know what they want. Mm. We got we got to know. Based on, now I ain't talking about running around, get a couple of scriptures and, and trying to make the world do what you want, quote, misquoting scripture. That ain't what I'm talking about. <laughs> don't, don't, don't go around trying to take you know, those two or three words out of context mm. and then make the world, ah, asking, I shall receive. Give me that house. Yeah. Go up there and say, y'all gonna have to move out this house in three weeks or God gonna give it to me. No, that's them people's house. Mm -hmm. you, God ain't gonna give you that. <laughs> God, okay. you, can't, you just can't roll up on somebody and, and talk. Uh, you, you, no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I'm talking is, what I'm trying to get us to understand is when we are living our lives in obedience to God, living our lives trying to be faithful disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, trying to understand his word and live by his word for his glory and his honor. When we do that, God will move on our behalf and make ways out of no way and lift burdens that we can never lift and provide, take a little bit and provide a lot with it. Okay. God will do that. He'll do it once we, we follow after him. Okay? So, so Jesus knew the donkey would be there. The disciples trusted him, and they did all of that. But now, when Jesus came into, into the, the, the temple, he came in re, trying to reestablish the situation where the temple had, um, things had messed up and, and things aren't, haven't gone so, so, so great. Uh, it's in Zechariah chapter, chapter 9, I think, like verses 9 and 10, is when the, the story... The prophet talks about the, the, the king coming back mm -hmm. lowly and riding on a donkey. Mm -hmm. um, the, Zechariah was a, a prophet priest, a priest prophet, who uh, prophesied during a time where the people had gotten frustrated by the world and had stopped building or rebuilding the temple after Babylonian captivity. So there was Babylonian <coughs> captivity, um, the the, the temple had gotten torn down. They had started building it back with Zerubbabel and, 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 and they started laying the foundation, uh, Nehemiah and the walls, and they had started trying to build the temple back. But the people had gotten frustrated because the world around them was hostile to them trying to be faithful to God. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the, somewhere, the estimate is somewhere, somewhere between 12 and 16 years, the work had stopped and become dormant, and people had still was growing. Uh, unfavorably comfortable mm -hmm. with God's house being in ruins. Mm -hmm. they, they were being, they were, they were okay with carrying on their lives without um, God's house being, um, being completed, which means at that time, if God's house is not in order, then mm -hmm. worship to God under that system yes. was not taking place. Yes. Mm -hmm. You yes. see, so, so this, it's not just brick and mortar, it is the spirit of worship under that system that was not. So people were okay with not worshiping God. Come on. People were okay with, with walking.
walking around with their sin because in that day, the way you got rid of your sin was as a sacrifice being offered. If the house of God is not together, the temple is not together, then what's happening is sacrifices aren't taking place. Mm -hmm. If sacrifices are not taking place, then people are not, uh, their sins are not being remitted. Mm -hmm. So they were, they were okay living in sin and not worshiping God. <laughs> You see, so it's not just the, it's not just the brick and the mortar of the temple. It was the mindset and the heart of the people being okay with with living lives that that was in, in opposition to God mm -hmm. and putting God on the back burner. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the, the the situation today mm -hmm. um, in the church today, the apathy in, in, of the church today, the the apostles, the apostasy, apostasy, apostasy. the apostasy. There you go, that word. That where where folk really don't care about God and they live it, they live their lives in a way that says that God is okay in his place. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, a lot of, of uh, committed Christians feel that way. They, they won't say it out their mouth, but mm -hmm. their lives say it, mm -hmm. that God's okay in his place. You know, God's okay until I need to handle it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, forgiving you, loving you is okay until I need to deal with you. Mm -hmm. You know, not, God making a way is good until I'm broke, now I need to go get this money. <laughs> You see, so it's it's it, you know God 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 is a friend who stick closer than his brother. Okay, till I get lonely, now I gotta go find a boo. Mm. You see, it's it's like it's we live in a way where, too often where it's okay that the system is broke, that the worship is broke, that that the holiness is is not there, <coughs> and and people get comfortable. Mm. You don't you don't feel bad. Yeah. People don't make you feel bad. Anymore, if you sin, they tell you, all right, everybody falls short. <laughs> See, it, the, day, a day, the day's gone where people will call you on your lack of holiness. Mm. There used to be a time where you act a certain way. They're like, look, no, 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 you can't, you can't say you serve God and do this all at the same time. No, you can't be no deacon and didn't do that right there. You mm. can't, no, mm. no, you can't do this and do that because mm. people will call you on your holiness. That day is gone now, and now people make you feel okay in your sin. Mm. You see, now it's okay if I go out and I sin. People say, that's okay, everybody mess up. It, it's mm. always all right. Okay, everybody mess up. And, and, and everybody do mess up. But, yes? I was say, don't you think it's happened more of the mourner's bench? Well, the mourner's bench is how people used to get saved. The mourner's bench is when people, you, in, 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 they, 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 they say they catch the Holy Ghost. Mm. You know, the mourner's bench is you, you say you got saved, you, you got converted on the mourner's bench. You go to the mourner's bench and you will stay there and you pray and people pray over you until you begin to, um, <coughs> you have an experience. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a life-changing uh, experience with God. But, but I'm talking about the, the nature of the understanding of the Christian fabric, the Christian economy, the way that saints used to live when, when some of us was, was uh, younger and even uh, you know, before, is that a, a mother of the church would pull you aside and correct you if you were showing too much leg. Mm -hmm. If uh, uh, one of the deacons will pull you aside, young boy, and talk to you if you're not acting, dressing, or, or behaving appropriately, because and it's not just your behavior or your dress. It was it was God deserves our best. Come on, God deserves our best life, our best dress, our best attitude, our best self. And when we don't give God our best. What we end up doing is giving it to someone else. Ooh. We give God, we give our best to that which we care most about. Mm. So if I care most about my job, my job will get the best of me. Glory. If I care more about my best about my relationships, then my relationships will get the best of me. Yes. But if I care about God, then God gets the best of me. Yes. So we can we nobody really have to tell you who you care most about. Yes. And you'll say, well, I know, but you see, I have to do this right now. Mm -hmm. No, 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 mm. no, no, not really. What we have to do is follow after God and look at how our, how our lives measure, measure up with God, and then he makes a way for us. Um, but just no, all I'm really trying to say is this. There's times, there was time, the time of, of, of when Zechariah wrote his, his, um, his prophecy, the temple and the system and the mindset of the people was not focused on God. Mm. It was okay to be anti-God. Mm. Mm. Like today, it's okay, it's popular even to be anti-Christ. Yes. 
to live in a way that Christ don't really control our lives. Mm -hmm. That's okay to do. And so when 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 he writes, that's the the issue. The issue is fix the system, fix your heart, get get your mind right, build a temple, get back to worship, get sin out your life, mm -hmm. get make God first and primary in your life again. Do that thing. That's what Zechariah was writing. Build this tabernacle, finish it, so we can get back to worshiping, glorifying, be a God-centered community. Do it so we can be God-centric again. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus is riding it into the tab into to Jerusalem and they see him coming, they remember Zechariah. Yeah. And now they're saying, here comes our deliverer. It's time for us to be reestablished again. It's time for us to be the ones that, that are in charge. We're going back to no more worshiping Caesar. and that. We're going back to God's center. Mm -hmm. right. But the issue is that Jesus was not back to reestablish the old tabernacle system, oh, the yeah. old temple system. Jesus was coming as the new tabernacle. Yeah. He himself was the new temple. Jesus. It was in him the sacrifices were being offered. Yeah. So Christ is coming, yes, to reestablish a Christ-centered relationship with the people or God-centric uh, community, but it wasn't what they were expecting. Yeah. See, that's why we can pray and pray and pray and pray, but if we expect God to act outside his nature, mm -hmm. we get mad when God show up as God. Mm -hmm. Glory. Mm -hmm. So we have to say, God's not going to, mm -hmm. he's not going to behave outside of his nature. Not because he can't, but he chooses not to. Mm -hmm. And who can make him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> who can make God act outside of God's self? Mm -hmm. We can't do nothing so bad that God going to lose his temper and, and, and act out of character. We can't be so sinful that God is going to be so hurt and embarrassed that he's going to cover his face and act out of character. We can't do nothing so good that God can be so appreciative that he's going to give of himself and act out of character. There is nothing we can do, say, be, or do, or, or have that will make God, motivate God, move God to act, side, act to act outside of his godness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so who can make him? God, so so when, when Jesus came riding in, because of their expectations, their preconceived expectations and notions, which in many ways are founded because they're reading Zechariah, but they miss who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And when, I, when you miss Jesus, you miss the current truth. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like reading a newspaper, what's the day, the 19th? It's like reading the newspaper from April 19th, 1992. <laughs> you got the right day with the wrong news. Huh? It ain't the 18th. Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever the day is. Y'all understood it, right? <laughs> whatever the day is, y'all got it. It's like you you got you got the right date but the wrong news. Mm -hmm. you, you, it, it's, and so they saw Jesus coming, and they got they had they 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 had the right text, but they were not interpreted based upon the truth of Christ. Mm -hmm. So we might have the right text. God wants the best for us, but are you interpreting that on the truth of who Christ is? Mm -hmm. Christ, you know, He'll fight my battles. Yes, but are you interpreting that on the basis of who the truth of who Jesus Christ is? He'll make a way out of nowhere. Yes, but are you living your life interpreting that based upon the truth of Christ? He'll make a way out of nowhere. Don't give you a right to steal from your boss because he ain't paying you enough. <laughs> Because that's not what it means. That's, that, that is not interpreting the, the truth based upon the truth of who Christ is. See, yes, we, got to, we look at the scripture, we take the truth, but we have to interpret it based upon the truth of the one who's coming. The truth of who Jesus Christ is. That's how we interpret it. That's how we understand his word. That's how we live holy. We don't just take a text twist it around and make it our size and wear it, we have, we have to take it and under, see that text embedded in Christ speaking to us. What does holy, what does being ye holy mean when Christ said to you? Mm. What does love your enemy mean when he says it to you? Right. No matter who, what enemy is in front of you. Mm. When you got the worst somebody in front of you and Christ says love your neighbor, what does that mean? See, that, that's, where, that's where we are. 
is, is understanding, interpreting the text and as if Christ is sitting there teaching it to you right now, because mm. he is. Mm. It's the Spirit of God will lead you into all truth and all righteousness. Mm. It's the Holy Spirit that, that speaks to us, uh, reveal to us the truth about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So as he is speaking and teaching us, we have to say, what? That's what this means. It's not, it's not what fits my social structure. Mm. Now, there, there's a fight going on all the time about, about church and society, mm. secular and, 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 and a holy, sacred. That, that's, that is a, a, um, uh, a make-believe fight. That's a, a false dichotomy. It's not, it's not a real comparison. Mm -hmm. See, because in Christ, all things are sacred. Mm. So when you look at Christ, it doesn't matter if you're looking at social constructs, looking at social systems or civil organizations. Mm. It don't matter. They're all they're all sacred and holy. And the way we deal with them is we deal with them as honoring Christ and how we handle them. Mm. So God, I will deal with them in a way that give you glory. Mm. Why? Because they're all so they're all sacred. So when you go to your job, you're not dealing with something that is outside of the belly wick of the church. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's church, and this is this is job, and this is church. This is school, this is church. This is business, and this is church. No! No, 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 no. It's all God. If God ain't God on your job, he's not God at all. And if he's not God at school, he's not God. See, he ain't just God in the church. He got everywhere. So when I'm dealing on my job, I got to deal on my job just like I deal at church, serving the same God to his glory and to his honor. Jesus. That's what I got to do. That's what you got to do. Because that's how, we, that's how we honor him in the wholeness and the fullness of life. And don't miss the one writing to us. Because mm -hmm. if we don't do it that way, what we end up doing is putting our expectations on him. Mm -hmm. And when he doesn't meet them, we think something's wrong with him. Mm -hmm. we, start, we start quoting, you know, we get a whole list of go buy a promise. We don't read the, read the Bible, we just go buy a promise book and get all the promises <laughs> in the book and start quoting it. You need, you need, you need money to pay your bill. Look, you start reading all the texts that say that he's gonna, he gonna pay your bill, and we treat it like a dream book. That we just start, <laughs> we just start reading those two scriptures mm -hmm. and stand it on them. That's like taking a word out of every other sentence someone says and say, and try to make a, a, a sensible a statement out of it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what that's like. You listen, to, you listen to somebody talk, and every other word, every other sentence they say, you take one word out of it. <laughs> and then when you got about 15 words, you put it together and try to make a statement that makes sense. <laughs> that's what that's like. Because you're just going in and grabbing stuff out of context and saying, well, there, there's a promise. It ain't a promise. You don't know, you don't know what that says. You got to put it together. But, right. <laughs> But that, that's, that's what this was. That's where I saw him fall in. And, and, and they should have been a little bit um, excited, I guess is the word, mm -hmm. because he had the triumph early. Mm -hmm. The triumph, we said, is what? It is a celebration of victory, right? Right. So what do we learn from that? We learn that if we, if we follow Jesus, we win before we fight. Come on, Pastor. Mm -hmm. If you follow Jesus and do it the right way, you win from the from, from the starting line. You it, it, it's over. You know, it, it's like it's like what, what's that that the guy that the real fast from Jamaica who uh, you say vote 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 yeah 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 they he he lined up one time I don't I forgot what race it was and the commentator says everyone else is running for second. <laughs> <laughs> everyone else. Is running for second place. Mm. The gun hadn't been fired. <laughs> nobody had, had, had started. There was nobody running. But the commentator said that everyone else in the race is running for second place. Mm -hmm. It was a, a pre-gone conclusion mm -hmm. that this fellow was going to win the race. Mm -hmm. And, well, he won. <laughs> but the issue, the point I'm making is this. That was a declaration from the starting line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That was said before the starter pistol was fired, before they had kicked their legs and got in the starting blocks. They hadn't even got down to, to prepare to run yet. They were still standing up doing this. And the man said that everyone else is running for second place. See, that's what it's like when you really follow Jesus. Jesus gave you the triumph before the battle. You, he'll declare you a victor before you go to the fight. You get to win before you go. Now, now what happened if Hussein had heard him say, the announcer say that, right? And, and decided, I ain't even got to run. I already won. And he said back, what would have happened? He was lost. He, 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 he wasn't even placed. He would he would he been so far out of it. He been left at the starting line. Everybody else is done. <laughs> and then he said, "Well, I, wait, 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 wait." I heard the man say, "I already won. I didn't have to run if I already won." Mm -hmm. You see, and that's that's the attitude so many times we have. We see Jesus giving us a triumph. Jesus declared that you, we're more than conquerors, that we can do all things through Christ who, who strengthens us. There's a declaration that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He'll provide all of our needs according to his riches and glory. We have all of these promises. And so what we do, we don't leave the, we don't run the race. Mm -hmm. We stay on the promise, we stay on the starting line mm -hmm. because we heard somebody declare we already won. Oh you already won, but you got to run. Right. <laughs> you already won, but you still got to run. You still got to be holy. You still he, because they said who they said Hussein won. He couldn't run slow. Right. He couldn't jog. Right. He had to go out and run the race and, and be what he already was. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you hear yes. me? Yes. He had to run it so yes. he could be what he already was. Mm. You got to go out and live holy. You mm. got to follow God. You got to obey God and do the right thing so you can be what you already are. Mm. That, that what's in you can come out. The holiness that God has put in you can come out. The strength, the right, the, 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 the person that God created you to be can come out. That's why you got to run. I have to run this race. I got to do it. I can't just sit up and say, you know what? God already won. I'm, I'm, I, I'm one in Jesus. I, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed in Jesus. I, I, I'm saved and glorified in Jesus. I'm going to heaven in Jesus. Okay, all that's in Jesus. But you may go to heaven, but you're going to catch it down here. <laughs> we got to do what God has called us to do. We have to, we have to be holy. We have to be, uh, live to bring him glory and to give him honor. It ain't about working to earn our salvation. It's about loving God enough to do his will. Mm. See, here's the difference. People say, I ain't got to work. It's a free gift. It is a free gift. Mm. If nobody held a shotgun to your head, to, to, to the groom's head when he got married, it was a choice. Right. He got married. But now, he and she got to live in such a way that they cultivate and, and mature and, and, and move the, the, the relationship forward. If not, it will stall, and two, two people who are 65 cannot live like they're 19 based upon what they can have when they were 19, and they go happen. <laughs> if, if, if you meet at 19, one, you know, here you are at 19, and you don't grow, mm. You ain't, that, that 19 relationship, year old relationship ain't going to hold you down the road of peace. Mm -hmm. The relationship has to grow with you. Yeah. yeah. We, that's everybody. If you walk into a job knowing how to do ABC, mm -hmm. and 15 years later all you can do is ABC, <laughs> you didn't grow with the job. Okay. Y chances are you ain't going <laughs> to <laughs> well, You ain't going to have 15 years. Mm -hmm. But... So when the, when, 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 the situation, when the situation happens, when, the, when you see that, that Christ has already won, don't sit back and do nothing. Jesus. He's already won the battle, but you still got to run the race. Yeah. And here we see that the triumph come and the people, they go out and they celebrate with him. And, and the fact that he's done some things. But you know what they missed? They declared it, but they missed it. He fulfilled the law of Moses. And he continued the kingdom of David. Mm. Mm. 
He fulfilled the law of Moses. They mm. said it. Mm. But he had come in the name of the Lord. Mm. He fulfills the law. He continues the kingdom. And they fail to follow him. Mm. 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 He's, he's removed every roadblock from their lives. Mm -hmm. He's given them every opportunity to walk in the shadow of his greatness. Mm. And what happens? They choose not to. Because their expectation did not match his reality. Mm -hmm. We can't put our expectations on God. We have to follow him and not demand that he leads us where we want to go. Mm -hmm. He is not, I know a lot of times people, we, we compare God to a GPS. God is not a GPS. See, when you get in your car with your GPS, you program it. Mm -hmm. You tell it where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And its job is to take you where you want to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's how we treat Jesus. Jesus, mm -hmm. this is what I want. Now get me there. Mm -hmm. I want to be this. I want to have that. I want to do this. Now get me there. And we follow him, we say, but we tell him where to take us. Mm -hmm. No, when we really follow God, you don't really have no clue where you're going, Abraham. You don't really know where you're going to end up. You might be in the wilderness longer than you want to be. Mm -hmm. You don't know what he's going to do. Because you're following him. You're not directing him. You're following him. You're not directing him. You with me? Yeah. All right. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Why is the Jesus's entry into Jerusalem called the triumph. Why is it a triumphal entry? Why is it a triumph? What do you think? Anybody? Why is it called a triumph? Because the battle's won, right? right. Triumph is happens after the battle. Right. Remember that? Right. The fact that we call it that suggests that we understand that there's a fight involved. Mm, mm, mm. The fact that we say that there's that his entry into Jerusalem was a triumphal entry. Mm. The, the, it says that we understand that there was a battle, there's a battle, there's a fight mm. involved. Now, he fought it for us or with us. Mm. Either way, he's allowed us to participate in the victory march. That's what we under, That's what we need to get. That if you're free, you're not free because the devil decided to let you go. Come on. If you're free, you're not free because the devil said, oh, they, I, I've mistreated them long enough. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not free because the devil got afraid of you because you said, devil, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> because you started reading your Bible and fasting. That ain't why you're free. That ain't why you're free. You're free because Jesus fought a battle and won on your behalf. Mm -hmm. You're free because the enemy was defeated by the only one who could defeat him, mm -hmm. and that is Jehovah God come to us as Emmanuel who rested on a cross that we deserve, went to a hell that we should have been in, whooped the devil in his living room, took his keys and came back out. Mm -hmm. That's why we're free. We're free because Jesus set us free. Mm -hmm. There was a battle. There was a fight. But if you, there was a movie a while ago a world war, about World War II that did to, uh, so people got uh, behind enemy lines wherever they were fighting over Japan, wherever it was, they were behind enemy lines and the war ended. But they didn't know it and the people uh, between them and the, and the safe harbor, the, the, the zone of safety, mm -hmm. didn't know it. So they had to fight their way as though the war was still going on yes. out of enemy territory to where it's safe. Yeah. So, so the war was over. The war had been won. Mm. They won the war. Mm. But they were so on the other side of the enemy's line that they had to fight their way back. That's how an image it is in our lives here. Jesus already won the war, but we're still in enemy territory. 
We have to fight our way to glory. We got. We still got to resist the devil. We still got to, got to fast pray. We still got to be obedient to God. We still got to take a stand mm -hmm. against the enemy who's trying to destroy us, even though the victory has been won. Mm -hmm. God won the war, but you still got battles to fight. You're still gonna get sick. You're still <laughs> people are still gonna get on your nerve. <laughs> Relationships are still gonna have their challenges. <laughs> Stuff, money is still gonna get funny from time to time. <laughs> you're gonna wake up and, and and for no reason ain't gonna be able to stand yourself. And you're gonna say, What is wrong with me? Why am I so nasty today? Stuff is, <laughs> Stuff is going to happen. And you still got to be able to resist the enemy and trust God and get through. That's why we can't stop fighting because he won. Mm. Yes, he won. Mm. And yes, you're free. <clears throat> what you're fighting for is not to get free. Mm. You're fighting to stay free. Mm. That's what you're fighting for. Because mm. the enemy's trying to steal every gift God has given you. Hallelujah. And you got to fight to keep it. Fight to stay. The last thing is um, they said, blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord, right? They'll say, Hosanna, or we talked about Sunday, how Hosanna is really a prayer. Mm -hmm. It's like save now. It's a petition. God, save now. Don't wait. Just just get me out of here now. Save me now. Mm -hmm. um, we're, in, we're under this pressure, and I want, I want you to set me free. It comes from Psalm 118, and Psalm 118 is where the psalmist is... Uh, he recounts all this stuff that's going on in his life, all the pressure, all the anxiety, all the, the pain that's happening in his life. And uh, as he recounts that, it's, it's sandwiched, it's booked in with, you know, but bless the Lord whose mercies endures forever. And he talks about how, how good God is. And so here in Psalm 118, uh, I think somewhere around 25, 26, in the 20s, um, he starts talking uh, about Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But that's where we get a lot of our, um, in Psalm 118 is where we get a lot of our cliche type talking. Uh, if, you, if you read it, you, a lot of little sayings will mm -hmm. pop up that you are accustomed to hearing, right? But this one is in here, it says that blessed, blessed uh, is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes with the authority of the Lord. Blessed is the one. Mm -hmm. Happy is the one. Um, welcome and appreciated is the one who comes with the authority of God to do what? To set us free. Mm. So when they saw Jesus coming and they started in this, tr in this victory march, Jesus is coming in the victory march and they see him as the Messiah, they put Zechariah 9 and, along with uh, Psalm 118 and they're saying, He's the Messiah. He's the one who's been promised to us. And we're happy to see him. Messiah, save now. Deliver us now. Because you, you're blessed. Blessed is him who comes in the name of the Lord. And so and that's what we see um, many times in the church and in our personal lives. We get up against it. And we look up and we, we come to the mindset that Jesus is our only hope. That we, if, if he don't do it, it's not going to get done. And we start praying, Lord, save now. Do something now. And we start, blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. God, you have the authority. You have the power. Come and do this. Come and set me free. See, the crowd is quoting this because they realize they need deliverance. Mm. But there's a difference between knowing about Jesus and knowing Jesus. Come on. There's a difference in, in being able to talk about him and then then. Uh, it is to talk with him. There's, there's, there's a difference. So we don't just need to know about him as Messiah. We need to know him as Messiah. Yeah. Don't just know about him as the blessed one who comes with God's authority. But know him as the authority of our lives. Which means, God, whatever you want, I'll do. That's why, that's, that's why Jesus called, called Peter Satan. Get behind me, Satan. <clears throat> why? Because Peter's, Peter put his expectations on Jesus. Mm. Peter said, no, Jesus, I got to die. No, 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 no. Peter said, no, you can't. Uh -uh. Mm. No, 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 not you. You're the Messiah. Mm. You, 
We've given our life. We've invested too much in you, into you for this. I, I, I've given them too much. I walked away from too much. And and and, and Jesus says, "Get behind me, Satan." You, because because what you're saying is is not it's not of God. Get behind me because your expectation is asking me to be something that I'm not to do something that to do something that I didn't come to do. So when we ask God to be something that he's not, to do something he didn't come to do, mm. then what we're asking him to do is to be as simple as we want to be. Mm. No, can't do that. God, God, have your way. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Mm. See, the truth is they were proclaiming Christ without really submitting to him. It's kind of like when Pilate put on the cross, the here is the king of the Jews. It was the truth, but he didn't believe it. Mm. Go ahead, Pastor. See, when we proclaim scripture, scripture is true, but do you believe it? Mm. Am, I willing, am I willing to hold on, to bet my life on the truth of who Christ is and what Christ has done and what he's willing to do? Or am I just quoting it, hoping that it pays off? Mm -hmm. Do I quote it like I play the picket? I don't play the picket, but do I quote it like I play the lottery or the picket? Here it is. I hope it, I hope it fall out. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just helping God. God know I need some money, so I'm just giving him opportunity. You know, If I don't play it, he can't use that tool to give it to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if I win, I'm going to pay my side. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to bless the church when I win. Okay. Ain't that <laughs> Take what you put on, on, on the lottery and bless the church. Anyway. How about that? It bring you know instead of putting that ten dollars on the lottery, just bring keep two and give eight, <laughs> then everybody get blessed. <laughs> you get to buy a sandwich and the church get blessed too. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, the, what I'm saying is just the revealed truth here. The re, for me, the takeaway, the reveal of this text is that. Christ shows us who he is. And we come to him without our preconceived notions, without our personal expectations. We will see who he is. Mm -hmm. And we can trust the truth of who Christ is. But if I come to God, if I go to Christ in prayer or in how I live my life with my preconceived notions about what, who he is and what he's going to do and how he's going to act, <laughs> when I go and I put on him what I expect, God, you do this and God, you do that. <laughs> See, whenever we start talking about what God will and will not do, mm -hmm. we don't know what God will and will not do. Now, I ain't talking about God will sin and God won't sin. Okay, okay that's elementary. Mm -hmm. But when I'm saying what, what's going to fall out of God's character, mm -hmm. all that I know is he's going to be right and holy. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's going to look like when it hit the ground. I don't know what shape it's going to take. I just know it's going to be right and holy. I mean, you have to ask yourself, was it? It was right. It was holy. It was good that God fed those the people in the wilderness for forty years, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But couldn't He have done something more than manna? Mm -hmm. <laughs> for forty years, they ate the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's why He said, I, "We're tired of this stuff." <laughs> so you have to say, you know, God didn't God. So some people will say that was wrong of God. God could have gave him some some other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he, he, he brought he brought water out of a rock. He could have brought Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, but so we don't know. Mm -hmm. If we go expecting what, what, what God going to do and telling God what to do and holding God to our standard of what he got to do, we're, we're not only uh, abusing God, we're cheating ourselves of the privilege of getting the true blessing that God has for mm -hmm. us. You with me? Mm -hmm. So the takeaway, be holy. Be Trust God. And get in your word to follow him. Just follow, do his way. Yeah. When you do it his way, you see Messiah coming. Yeah. And when you say, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, you'll know what you're saying. And you'll be willing to follow him wherever he leads. Yeah. All right? Yeah. All right, God bless you. Questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody said I didn't ask questions last time. Questions, comments, thoughts. All right.
That's it. Thank y'all so much.